All right guys, another repair video on the E60 M5 again today. Going to be looking at changing out the charcoal canister. So what the heck is a charcoal canister? Well this thing's tied in with your fuel tank. Now petrol, being a volatile liquid, gives off fuel vapours. And then vapours have got to go somewhere. It's no good them going to atmosphere because they're a hydrocarbon. So they're collected in this thing, the charcoal canister, which has a charcoal filter in it. And then once the engine's switched on, then vapours are released to the engine and burnt off. Now what can happen over time is the filter in here can become blocked, especially if it's been exposed to liquid petrol, like if you've topped off your tank too much and it's overspilt into the charcoal canister here, or it can just become blocked over time anyhow. This thing's 15 years old now. So what can happen when this thing becomes blocked is it'll cause your fuel tank to become unable to breathe. So what will happen is as your liquid level reduces as you're driving the car, it'll start creating a vacuum in the top of your tank and it won't be able to breathe and that vacuum will keep increasing and then in turn the effect this can have on your fuel tank is it can start destroying the seams of your tank and ultimately it'll start collapsing the tank uh, a bit like if you crushed a coke can with the hand you know so what's the easiest way to tell if this thing's failing we'll take the car for a short drive pull over and then immediately remove your gas tank cap and if you hear this noise which is essentially your gas tank gasping for air then you know it's blocked, you know it can't breathe and it's time to change it out now then, if your car's in a North American spec car you'll also have what's called a DMTL pump attached to this thing and that's used for leak detection purposes and when that thing starts failing it'll start giving you codes relevant to the pump so if you're having to change that pump out at any time it's a good time to change your charcoal canister out also it doesn't have the pump on Euro spec cars, so don't worry about that if yours is a Euro spec. This is a Euro spec. Now, as always, I'll leave a part number for this thing in the description. Anyhow, let's go and find out where it lives and get on with the repair. Okay, it lives up inside the right rear wheel well. So what we'll do is we'll jack the rear of the car up. We'll remove the rear wheel at the right hand side, and we'll get up in there and have a look. Right, got the rear end jacked up now. Got the rear right wheel off. So the next job is to remove this inner wheel liner. Okay, so to remove the rear wheel well liner, we've got two plastic 10 mil nuts, one there and one there. We've got a plastic plug to remove here, and then we've got a load of eight mil bolts to remove. So there's, let's see, one, two, come on light, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and then up the top there, the front, nine. So we'll get all that lot removed and we'll start feeding the uh, plastic liner out. Okay, that's that little lot removed. Now there are two more of these bolts that take an 8mm socket just hidden under this flap here. There's three of them there. It's just the two outer ones you want to be removing. All right, so the old plastic wheel liner can be a bit tricky to remove sometimes. It's tucked up there nice and tight, can put up a bit of a fight. So what I normally do is pull these two pieces off here first, off the threaded pegs. So pull them out and then just start feeding this piece out of the lip of the wheel arch there. Feed it inwards and then do the same on the front side. And then there's not much in the middle there, so it's basically just a... The idea is just to collapse it like that and then feed it out. Now then, here's the charcoal canister hiding up here, that's where it lives, and now it's staring us in the face, we can get the thing removed. So, there's three hose connections we need to remove here, and it's just the normal squeeze and pull style connector, and as always just go careful with them things because they are plastic and they do get brittle over time and they can break, and if one of them things break on you, it's going to make for a bad day. And then we've got two 10mm bolts to remove there and there. And then we can slide the charcoal canister out the wheel arch. And there is two tangs right at the top there. It's just hooked up behind that bit of steel there. So it'll sort of twist out like that as it comes out. And don't be an idiot when you're working around here. Don't be doing it with a cigarette on the go or anything like that because there's the chance of fuel vapors coming out of these hoses. So just think about what you're doing. Okay, there's the old one. It's the shiny new one, and yeah, when you come to refit it again, 
just insert the two tabs there and the metal locators and then you've got your bolts to go in here and then reconnect the hoses okay and what we'll do before we reconnect these hoses is we'll just give these o-rings a little squirt of silicon spray that'll give them a new lease of life and make sure that they clip on nicely without the o-rings getting compromised okay so there we go that's the new one fitted all the hoses reconnected so next we'll refit the plastic wheel well liner again chuck the wheel back on drop it back down on its wheels and she's all good to go all right guys the car's back down on its wheels now all back together so once I'd finished, I let the car idle for oh, five minutes or so, just to make sure there was no vacuum leaks or throwing any codes or anything after I'd been in there and disrupted them hoses. And I took the car for a short run. And I must say, it feels like the car's running slightly smoother, slightly better. There seems to be a little bit of an improvement there. I'm not sure if I'm just imagining it, but there's something definitely that feels slightly better. And then I did the test with removing the petrol cap and she wasn't gasping for air anymore. So that's all sorted. So it's certainly a job worth looking at doing before the thing fails. You don't want to get into a situation where your gas tank's starting to collapse. And you know the youngest of these cars is over 10 years old now, so it's worth chucking on that list of preventative maintenance things to do. And apart from that wheel liner being a bit tricky to remove, it's a relatively easy job to get done. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe for more M5 videos. I'm Guy. thanks for watching.